Well, today we have a very common issue. The bedroom door doesn't close tight. Now, let me show you. Go like this, and I'll show you the doorknob. No matter how hard I close it, it doesn't close. I'm going to show you a trick on how to actually uh, make the door physically close properly. Alright, so for what I've done first was I figured out the center part of this strike plate. So basically the doorknob, the door post that goes into here, should basically line up inside of this oval. So here's the center part right there. So I put a little dash right there. Then when I close the door, you can see the strike plate is up here and here, not, and this barrel here is not really centered. So I'm going to put a dash right in the center of where that barrel is. And that will give me an idea on how far off we are. So I'm not too far off by that much. Let's see. So we have our three hinges, this one, this one in the center, and this one down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these three screws here and I'm going to put a shim behind here to pull the door out just a little bit to see if it raises that doorknob up just a little bit to click into the uh, strike plate. Now admittedly, some of this is going to be trial and error. So let's take out the screws. But this is part of, uh, part of home maintenance. You have to try things. You have to see if it works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so what I'm going to use as a shim behind here are actual shims I bought at the store. Now you can also use popsicle stick or you can also use a uh, tongue depressor, whatever you have. But this one here is, is very thin at the top and it's got some, some uh, width down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is, because the gap isn't that much, I'm going to start it, let's say right about here, I'm guessing but we're going to try it there. So what I'm going to do, because I am starting right about here, is I'm going to draw a line like this and I'm going to cut it. Now, I'm on carpet here, so what I'm, I'll show you how I'm going to do this. I have another shim that's here. I'm going to use it as a plate and I'm going to cut my shim on the plate. So here's my line and I'm going to cut it like that. It's just a line. And it snaps right off. See? And then I'm going to put it against the hinge and I'm going to measure down to the bottom. It's right about there. So once again, I'm going to make a, a relatively straight line, go across. And I'm going to cut that. Okay, there it is. This is my shim so far. And I say so far because we've got a little trimming to do. The hinge, as you know, flips. So I'm going to put it onto here. It's going to fit inside of the, the indentation that's been routed out by the factory like this. And I notice that this is curved. So I'm going to cut off some of the corners here. But first I'm going to draw on there approximately where they are. They don't, this doesn't have to be artistic or anything. All right. So 
we're going to cut these little corners off. So I'm going to cut this one corner off like that. I'm going to cut this little corner off like that. All right, let's let's measure again and see how it works. All right, so it looks like it's going to fit in there pretty well. Now, the next portion is this hangs over this little lip just a little bit. So I'm going to put a little mark here and I'm put a little mark down here with its edges. Because I want this shim to go just inside of this. I don't want it to hang out and interrupt part of the hinge closure area. So I have my, my mark here and here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a scrap piece and use it as a straight edge. Okay, and I'm going to draw a line. See? And now I'm going to cut along that line with my razor knife. And it comes right off. Okay? Now remember when you're putting this back onto the hinge area that the fat part at the bottom, because this is tapered, it's fatter here than it is up here. You want the fat part down at the bottom. So we're going to go like this. And it fits right in there pretty nice. See? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put our screws back in. So I'm going to close the hinge and it will, you'll physically see the door move just a little bit. Can you see that? Well, this shim is inside of the groove. Be careful, it likes to flop around just a little bit. All right. And we're gonna put the first screw in. Okay. But we're not going to weld it down tight. It goes through these shims pretty easy because it's a very soft wood. It goes back into the existing hole. All right, that's tight enough for right now. See, I don't have it welded down. But it's enough for me to let go of the hinge. Now I'm going to put the bottom one in next. I put it in the center of the hole and I push just a little bit to get it through the shim that we just put in so it rides into the, into the existing hole. Okay, and then I'm going to put the center one in and do the same thing. Push just a little bit and get it into the existing hole. Alright, now I'm going to tighten them up. I'm going to tighten them up. And I'm going to tighten them up. See, that top one went just a little bit more, didn't it? All right, let's test the door and see what happens. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Closing the door. Look at that. And watch this. It fits nice. It worked. It worked perfect. We did a good job. So making the door close was a very interesting project. Sometimes it's trial and error. You just got to figure out how far your gap is that you're off when you want to close the door and that barrel is not going into the hole. So you have to figure out, it's just really just trial and error. But that is a very common way to go ahead and fix that problem. Now if it is a rather large gap, there are different alternatives and to fixing the door on how to make it go into the strike plate the right way. Uh, sometimes, here's the strike plate here, sometimes what you have to do is you have to physically take the strike plate off and move it down or move it up and then you gotta fill in the gaps and all that kind of stuff. And I can show you how to do that if you'd like me to, if you'd like me to show you. Now, a little project like this is no big deal. It's not like you had to remove the door or you had needed a thousand tools. You had the tools, you had your razor knife, you had your screwdriver, and the only thing you had to do is find some sort of a shim. Okay? Now again, these are 
uh, pine shims I got from the store, Lowe's, Menards, um, Home Depot, any hardware store would have them. You could also use um, tongue depressors, you can use popsicle sticks, but I do recommend these because they taper. What you want to do is have that thin part at the top of the hinge and the wider part down at the bottom of the hinge. You're the hero of the house now. Now the door closes, whether it's your kid's door or whether it's your, your personal door for going into your bedroom, any door of the house. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. Of course you can do it. If they can do it, you can do it. Just have them show you how, like I did. If you would please, please subscribe, please subscribe, please subscribe. There's some sort of a button down here. If you'd push that thing, that would be wonderful. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next video.